Hey everybody, and welcome to the course. This is Integrating Elasticsearch with PHP in Laravel. I'm Kyle Nicodemus, and this is a video course brought to you by Pact Publishing. Like I just mentioned, my name is Kyle Nicodemus, and I will be your guide as we work through this course together. I currently work as a DevOps engineer and backend developer at a company just outside of Washington, DC. I've been working with servers and web applications for years, and I'm a networking and systems administration graduate from the Rochester Institute of Technology. I led the integration of Elasticsearch during the development of a Laravel web application, and I currently manage and maintain our Elasticsearch deployment for that Laravel web application. You can find me on Twitter at KFNIC. We'll be using a lot of different technology and software as we make our way through this course. The big ones, of course, will be Elasticsearch, PHP, and Laravel. Elasticsearch is an open source, full text search engine based on Apache Lucene and written in Java. It can be used to quickly run queries against large amounts of information. We'll be using PHP, of course, and when we write our PHP code, we'll be using Laravel, which is an open source PHP web application framework. Everything that we do in this course, except for the last section, which is specifically integrating with Laravel, will apply to any PHP application, but we'll be writing our demonstrations in our code using a Laravel application. In the last section, we'll be integrating Laravel and Elasticsearch using Laravel Scout. Laravel Scout is a driver-based full-text search solution that you can use to integrate full-text search with eloquent models in a Laravel application. We'll be using an open source Elasticsearch driver for Laravel Scout, since by default, Laravel Scout no longer supports Elasticsearch. As we make our way through the course, we'll progress through a number of sections. In the first section, we'll set up our development environment. In this section, what we're going to do is set up a Laravel Homestead virtual machine. Laravel Homestead provides a pre-built Vagrant virtual machine, which will provide for us all of the PHP, MySQL, and other software versions that we'll need to develop a Laravel application. We're actually going to install Elasticsearch on this Laravel Homestead virtual machine. Once we have this set up, it doesn't matter what operating system you run on, you'll be able to use this virtual machine to run any of the command line commands that we'll need to run. In the next section, we'll move on and take a look at Elasticsearch basics and tools. In this section, we'll dig into Elasticsearch before we start writing any PHP code. We'll take a look at Elasticsearch under the hood, we'll try and figure out how it works, and we'll start out by learning some basic concepts We'll take a look at how data is structured in Elasticsearch, how that data is stored. We'll look at inserting data into Elasticsearch, querying and getting data back from Elasticsearch. We'll look at how we can get some information on the status of our Elasticsearch server, and then how to interpret the results that we get back from hitting the Elasticsearch API. We'll move on to some more intermediate concepts. We'll write some more advanced queries, and we're looking at using the Elasticsearch query DSL or domain-specific language to write advanced Elasticsearch queries. We'll look at all the different kinds of queries we can write and how we can use certain types of queries to combine different types of queries and write larger, more advanced, and get more specific results from our Elasticsearch queries. In the next two sections, we'll take a look at setting up and querying with two different Elasticsearch PHP clients. The first client we'll use is Elasticsearch PHP. This is the official Elasticsearch PHP client it's a very low-level wrapper around the Elasticsearch API. The other client that we'll take a look at is Elastica. This is a popular open-source PHP client for Elasticsearch. It's higher level than the official client. It's very object-oriented. In this section, we'll take a look at setting up data structures. We'll create new mappings and define the mappings and insert them into our Elasticsearch server. We'll take a look at inserting single documents, and then we'll use Faker to generate a large amount of sample data bulk import that data into our Elasticsearch server so we can run some queries against it. After that, we'll take a look at querying our Elasticsearch server using both of the PHP clients. We'll start out writing some simple queries, similar to the ones that we looked at in previous sections. We'll move on to writing more advanced queries. We'll learn how to use aggregations to analyze data in our Elasticsearch server, and how we can pair aggregations and queries to analyze specific subsets of our data. And finally, we'll look at programmatically building Elasticsearch queries. We'll pretend we get some information from, say, an advanced search page in our application, and how we'd use that to programmatically build a query and execute it 
with each of the Elasticsearch PHP clients. In final section, we'll take a look at searching models with Laravel Scout. This is where we'll fully integrate Elasticsearch with our Laravel web application. We'll build models and migrations and sample data seeders. All of our data will be stored in MySQL, and because of Laravel Scout, it will be indexed on our Elasticsearch server. We'll write views, controllers, and routes to build a simple search page to search through our models in Laravel using Elasticsearch, and then we'll write a more advanced search page to further narrow down our searches and get more specific results from our Elasticsearch server. At the end of this section, we'll take a deep dive into the open source Elasticsearch driver that we downloaded and installed for Laravel Scout. With all the knowledge that we gained throughout the course, we should be able to figure out how the code is working and how this Laravel Scout driver is integrating our Laravel application with our Elasticsearch server. As we proceed through the course, we're going to go through three phases or steps. In the first step, we'll gain a basic understanding of Elasticsearch. We'll start out by learning what it is and how it works, figuring out the terminology that we need to know, figure out how our data looks, what queries look like, how queries work, how queries and data are analyzed in Elasticsearch, and how to write some simple and more advanced queries, and how to use the Elasticsearch Query DSL. In the next step, we'll take all that information and learn to do it in code. We'll use two different Elasticsearch client libraries in our PHP application, and we'll write code using each client library to integrate with our Elasticsearch server, to write some queries, to write more advanced queries. We'll programmatically build queries, and we'll analyze all the sample data that we generated and inserted into Elasticsearch. In the third step, we'll fully integrate our Laravel application using Laravel Scout. We'll have our Laravel models, we'll have our views, we'll have our routes, we'll write some code in our controller so that we can take our models and build a search page and an advanced search page and have a fully functional, searchable Laravel web application. By the end of this course, what you should have is an understanding of Elasticsearch. You should have an understanding of the terms, the basic functionality, how it works, what queries look like, what responses look like, how you talk to the API. You should be able to write queries using the Elasticsearch Query DSL. You should have the knowledge and ability to use two different Elasticsearch PHP clients to write and extend Elasticsearch integrations in any PHP web application. And you should know how to use Laravel Scout to integrate Elasticsearch and create searchable models in a Laravel web application. Our next video is the first video of the course, the first video of our dev environment setup section. In this video, we'll get started setting up our dev environment so we can work our way through the course and learn everything we're going to learn throughout the course. Thank you guys for checking this out. I can't wait to see you in the first video. I'm excited to get started, so I'll see you there.